a little over an hour ago and boy in just that hour that i went live talking about how we haven't done much suddenly two big re-signs happened with the seahawks as indicated by the title uh noah fant returns as tight end and jason williams defensive tackle back to the seahawks uh the jason williams one is huge i was really concerned that the seahawks were not going to be able to keep him at uh defensive line with uh, so much given up to keep him or to get him in the first place giving up a second round uh pick and a 2025 fifth round pick uh it looked like he might go explore other options but Sure enough, they get the deal done. It's a 60, what was it, 60, 63 and a half million dollar deal with 43.85 guaranteed, roughly about 21 million dollars a year. And which is huge because I just did not count on him coming back as I was trying to think, okay, what options could we have to bring in a uh, defensive tackle to replace the hole that he would leave? So that's that's a huge one, getting him back. And then Noah Fant, you know, just, you know, uh, winding up with the fact that Kobe Parkinson uh, got picked up and Will Disley got picked up and we had nobody. And all of a sudden, the best of the three tight ends really comes back to Seattle. It's a two-year, $21 million deal. Uh, I believe it was $9 million signing bonus. So he gets $9 million this year and then $12 mil next year. Uh, so immediately some holes filled that i was very panicky about so yeah i'm very relieved that they got some action done today uh really just bringing back guys who were you know, on the verge of walking or had the opportunity definitely to go explore other territories and able to bring them back so uh that was a huge a uh, couple of huge name signs. I'm still waiting for that big one. You know, there was some rumor about Patrick Queen being in town. I've yet to see anything legit about that. Patrick Queen, of course, the linebacker, uh, free agent linebacker of the Baltimore Ravens, who everybody, including myself, thought, well, would it be great if we could have him come back, especially with now looking like our two top linebackers likely gone already. Jordan Brooks goes to the Dolphins and Bobby Wagner likely not returning either as he uh as it looks like the seahawks are not interested in bringing him back and, and about that you know i was talking about my feelings about the, the linebacker spot and if i had to make a choice which one would i keep uh i did say i would probably have to go with jordan brooks over bobby wagner if i could choose one as it turns out they got neither, so again, we're really in the hunt for a linebacker uh, or two to come help out of the middle of the, of the defensive backfield. Um, but so again, it was it pained me to say that I was okay if Bobby didn't come back. It was hard to say it because you know he was such a franchise guy, and you felt like you let him go the first time when he was even younger and even more productive and now he comes back comes back last year in a year that you know our defense is one of the worst he actually was productive had a lot of tackles but you could see it on tape you could see it on film that bobby just was not as fast as he used to be and you can see this the speed slowing him down some so it'll be interesting to see where he ends up going as he's you know reaching that stage where he's down to his last couple of seasons if that in his career so will he go someplace else um he could you know he could choose to retire too if he doesn't get a deal he likes so there's always that possibility but you know we definitely are in a major hunt for a linebacker oh here's everybody in the chat crx martin what's up huge he says ad uh said sad that you had to say no i'm going to the mariners game with me lol yeah sorry brother um I even had Mark asking me about going to opening day and uh, got to turn that down. Uh, and that was because I'm going to uh, Spokane for a tournament, volleyball tournament. So that one I will, will not even be in town for. But it's, I, as I knew going forward, it's, uh, the rest of this month is going to be extremely busy for me. So sorry about that, bro. 
Aiden Lawson. What? Base tug boat was here earlier. What's going on? Can we get fields? Uh, we're pretty much locked into the Geno scenario, which I'm okay with for the next year. Question is going to be, what will they do in the draft? You know, we'll explore that later. I still contend that they could very well be looking to get the eventual heir apparent in the draft in one of these quarterbacks with pick 16. But so much more to do. So much more in this upcoming week. Um, we've we've lost more of that we've than we've gained in the net sum of things. But you know, as far as players retained so far, everybody who has been signed or re-signed are all former free agents or guys who had contracts to be, you know, restructured. That would be Tyler Lockett, D. Eskridge, and now Jason Williams. And, or, sorry, Leonard Williams and Noah Fent. And if you don't include what was done way much earlier, Geno Smith, of course, restructuring his his contract a little bit there to make it a little bit more friendly with that whole converting uh, salary into signing bonus trick that they always do to get more cap space. I was wondering about that whole thing. That, that seems to be the trick nowadays, isn't it? You just Whenever you're up against the cap, just convert their salary into signing bonus and somehow that just kicks the the number down the line why don't they just start off that way so that they can just have that number low to begin with i don't know it's a funny thing funny funny things in contracts in the nfl it's the only place that i know where contracts are really not what they say they are you know you sign a contract and you know that this contract will probably not ever be fulfilled the way it was intended you know it might be a five-year deal but you rarely see all five years played out the only number that really matters is the guaranteed amount and that's all that anybody can really count on outside of that the number of years you know uh, rarely the duration ever matches what it's uh, originally intended to i think it's just a funny thing it's a it's a funny deal because you look at the numbers you go look at the years you spread it out and you go oh it's something 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 per million per year unless it's a deshaun watson deal where it's a fully guaranteed contract I don't know what those guys were thinking. Uh, they have not gotten anything on back on that. You know, very minimal return so far on that fully guaranteed contract. Um, at least for the Russ one, they had the ability to get out of it because it wasn't fully guaranteed. Just, you know, a mere uh, $39 million this coming year. But, yeah, so Russ is not hurting for money. Russell's in that stage. I think I talked about this when I did my last video talking initially about Russell going to Pittsburgh. And I really think that this, well, this kind of has to be his return to greatness opportunity. And he's got to make it work because if he can't make it work now, he might be done in the NFL. I mean, this is the perfect situation, again, because it's low risk for both parties. Russell's already getting paid his $39 million from the Broncos. The Pittsburgh Steelers take him on on a $1.2 million deal. He's getting paid less than the second year uh, quarter, or I guess it's this third year technically, right? Um, uh, Pickett, who's really getting paid three point something million. So I'm sure when Russ had that long meeting with Steelers management that he must have convinced them enough where he told them what he wants to accomplish, but they must have also made some assurances that Russ would most likely get the start, the inside pole position on the starting as the starter for the Steelers. Obviously not guaranteed, but I would like, I would venture to say that Russ would not want to go to a situation where he's, has a high potential of being the backup because if you being if you're the backup, not exactly the thing that's going to resurrect your comeback career, right? I mean, he's going to make a comeback. He's kind of got to make it now, and but it's it's a low risk cost, low risk for the team for the Steelers. It's one year, one point two million. So I mean, it's nothing, right? D. Eskridge, 
uh, is almost making the same amount this year as Russell Wilson will be making from the team he's actually playing on, playing for. Um, and he gets the opportunity to play for a team where his priority isn't to get paid, isn't to be the most, you know, like before he always wanted to be the highest paid quarterback. He was in that, there's a nuclear arms race of quarterback salaries where he and Aaron Rodgers were like going back and forth. Remember for a while when it was him and, and Rodgers, Russ would have the highest paid contract and then Aaron would renew and get his a little bit higher. And then Russ would come back with a little higher one. I mean, it felt like it was this two, two quarterback duo of challenging salaries. Well, obviously since then things have really changed, but now Russ, it's not about money for him. It's about his legacy. And that's really the most important thing for him because if he wants to have that, you know, of consideration of being one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Well, he can't really leave the league with what he left in Denver as part of one of the worst trades of all time and two losing seasons and no playoff appearances. He's got to, he's got to come back and show that he still can do it, that he can lead a team to the playoffs. He says he wants to win two Super Bowls in the next five years. Good luck with that, Russ. But I think he's got just as good a chance in anywhere as he does in Pittsburgh. I think he does have to humble himself. He's going to have to be a little bit more, you know, not entitled. I think he's going to earn things. He's, you know, going to a blue collar state where he's got to really like, you know, be a man of the of the team, a man of the people, and like work. This is a place where guys, you know, they they they, they work and uh, get your hands dirty and. Russ has got to be part of that. You know, when it came to Denver, it was almost like a king coming in with a castle and his own office. And the red carpet was laid out for him because he was the anointed savior to be of the Broncos. That's a lot to live up to. And it clearly never got to that point. Where here he's coming in with not quite as high as expectations maybe even lower expectations than what he might actually deliver. And I think the Steelers really are uh, designed for the, the perfect match from in terms of the coach that's, that, that will be uh, coaching him, longtime coach, uh, Mike Tomlin, who's kind of seen everything, you know, up there with the type of duration with one team that, that Pete Carroll had. And having... Um, you know, a uh, situation where they, uh, once again, they're not dependent on Russ to be the guy to save them, but he could be just good enough to take them to that next level where they have a team that's pretty solidly built around in other areas from the run game to the defense. Um, he's just got to be a shadow of himself. And I thought, you know, I kind of said going into last year that this was the year that Russ is going to have to really prove that he can do it. And, to a certain degree, he did show that he was a better quarterback than he was in year one at Denver because he actually had pretty good numbers. He made some pretty amazing plays, had the team going after starting off really terribly, went on a pretty good win streak and looked like they were destined to make the playoffs and then things just didn't quite click. And, you know, clearly Sean Payton did not have the desire to work it out with him. But maybe this Mike Tomlin situation over in the Steelers might be. So... We'll see, but I think it's about as good a situation as he could run into. Again, the Steelers should things should the wheels fall off the bus and Russ under performs under delivers. They could always bench him. They could always cut him. They're not obligated to any high amount of money or duration of contract or anything like that. And so it's really a, a low investment, low risk for them. High upside, minimal downside. And so and you know, can you pick it? Basically knows, okay, well, now I got to compete for this job. But he can also look at it, well, and if I lose the job, the starting job to Russell Wilson, well, he gets to learn from one of the best quarterbacks that's played the game, and maybe that makes him a better quarterback as well. So they might be able to push each other, whereas there wasn't that issue at Denver. So it's going to be fun to watch, that's for sure. I'll definitely be watching to see how it goes. And I don't know, there's a part of me that I got I got nothing against Denver, really, except for maybe back in the old days in the 70s and 80s when they used to kick our butts all the time in the AFC. But um, we beat them in the Super Bowl. 
you know, there's really nothing Denver's really done against us that I, unlike a lot of other teams that I have much more resentment towards. And, um, but it would be funny to watch the Broncos have to just uh, eat dirt, have mud on their face. If Russ went to go and have some success with the Steelers that he didn't have it with the Broncos on their tab, I think it would just be funny. Because really, when I look at the whole scope of things, it was Denver who screwed that up. I mean, Russ wasn't what they wanted it to be, but he, they also gave him an extension he didn't deserve. And that's on Denver for doing that. Anyway, going back to the chat here. Um, uh, who's this? Oh, he Langs. Patrick Queen just signed. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Do I think he will? Good chance. I think that's one rumor that I would love to see come together if they can make the money work. Um, but yeah, Leonard Williams signing, that's a big, what was it? $20 million hit. Fant, another nine. So we're already back up to 30 million in cap. And when we just cleared out about four, were we like 40 something. So it's not like we have a ton of money room at this point. So I don't know exactly where we're at, but Patrick Queen's probably going to command a you know, a good amount of $15 million a year type of deal. So I don't know how much room is left, but yeah, I'm sure they'll figure out some way if they really want him here. They always seem to work that cap deal out. Uh, Aiden lost. What do we do at quarterback? Uh, it's going to be Gino. They can roll with Gino and then look to the draft. Uh, Michigan, Kraken, Brooks joined the Dolphins. Just talked about that. Do I want Justin Fields? Not really. I'm not really that crazy about it. I would rather take my shot with the draft and roll with Gino. At least we know what we got with Gino. And I, like, like I said, I still would love to see Gino with a better defense and, you know, uh, improved offensive line play and creativity from the offensive coordinator. I still think there's stuff that uh, we haven't seen him do yet. Did I say, the mistake, the DL name was Leonard Williams. I keep saying, I think I kept saying Justin Williams. I don't know why. Leonard Williams, my bad. Um, Seahawks just said Patrick Starr. That's funny. Uh, Daniel, what's up? RS3. What do you think we do for QB? I just talked about that. The draft, the draft, the draft. Michigan crack. I would love to have Queen. Base tugboat. Uh, apparently Drew Locke signed with Minnesota. I haven't seen that yet. Aiden, should we treat DK for a higher pick? No. I think we need to... No. <laughs> I'm going to see the tandem together. I'm going to see JSN, Tyler Lockett, DK together with this new offensive coordinator. Uh, I Zangs, we should have brought back Bobby Brooks and signed Queen, then we would be set. Well... Remember, in a 3-4, you don't have the three linebackers. It's a little bit different. But I thought we'd get one. I thought we would have had a Brooks, but we lost both of them, most likely. So now I think we really need to get Queen. Uh, RSC, definitely not trading DK. Uh, Aiden, what do you think Justin Jefferson will do? Now, that's a good question, man. Do not know at this point. Some team that's definitely receiver needy at this point uh chite gun ganda lalake chite gun ganda lalake <laughs> the Tagalog name going on here bombi's old seahawks need to move on from pete's players uh will dog patrick queen would be sick aiden who do you want for the 16th i think it's gonna be a reach now I, i've been kind of Still look at that Michael Penix thing, man, and just really the whole, you know, Ryan Grubb OC combined with his former UW quarterback matchup would be fun to just imagine the possibilities with those two together. Um, see if it can translate to the NFL. Tristan, I'm gonna miss Jordan Brooks. No, I'm not gonna. I, you know, I thought he was the better of the two, but I was never in love with Jordan Brooks. I, I remember even when they put him as like the main linebacker when uh Bobby left the first time I was there I was like is he really ready is he really the guy I always have my concerns about that Michigan Kraken same I thought 
he'll be the new Wagner. Now we're talking about Queen. Tristan Davis, exactly. He was a diamond in the rough, led the team in tackles as a rookie as well. Uh, Quinn McLean, who do you think we're going to sign? <laughs> um, well, linebacker, we need bodies there. We need somebody, uh, offensive guard. We've seen a couple of guards move earlier. Um, I mean, Rams picked up a guard, uh, somebody else too. But yeah, a lot of movement, especially in the NFC East. Tristan, I remember when we, we was drafted and I wanted Patrick Queen so bad, happy we got Brooks. But hopefully we sign Queen. Everybody wants Queen. Do you think we might draft Penix? I think there's a possibility. I think there's a possibility. Make sure you uh, hit smash that like button and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't in a while. Um, caught up on the chat there. So that's... Uh, it's kind of it for now. We'll see and try to jump on here anytime some other uh, free agency news breaks. But I feel like this is just the just the beginning of uh, many more moves to come. But so far, I like what we did, what they did there. They brought Leonard Williams back and got uh, Noah Fant back as well. So all good, all good. Spots that we needed because we didn't have any tight ends. So now we got one good one. We got more, more work to do. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching. Talk to y'all later. Go Hawks.